and of course, not only our Spokane audience, but our remote sites. So thank you all for making the effort uh, to get to your various sites to join us today. Uh, we've got a, uh, I think a really fun day plan, uh, fantastic program for you to be very upbeat and positive as it should be. Now we were going to move it to five o'clock, but uh, you know, I didn't want to have a whole bunch of people not watching the national championship tonight. So we decided to keep with this time, you know, <laughs> telehealth, national championship. Come on. Yeah. Anyway. Can't compete with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what sport? <laughs> anyway, and since the Cougars aren't playing, I really don't care. <laughs> um, anyway, I'd like to welcome all of you. And as always, on behalf of uh, sort of the Parkinson's thing. Resource Center of Spokane uh, and our board of directors and Cindy back there, uh, our wonderful uh, associate back there working with us, I'd like to welcome all of you. And as always, we'd like to, uh, without the help of all of our sponsors, we wouldn't be able to do this. So I'd like to thank our sponsors. Uh, Tim Braun's with us today from Northwest Telehealth, who's producing today's program. Our host, St. Luke's Rehab uh, uh, Center, uh, for supporting us here uh, month in and month out. And of course, our, our sponsors who have helped us all along the way, uh, Northwest Parkinson's, our partners out of Seattle, Albertson's for their ongoing generosity, and, of course, all of our volunteers uh, that are with us each and every month. So thank you to all of you for making this happen. As always, uh, we'll hold our questions to the end. And remote sites, if you wouldn't mind uh, muting your uh, microphones until we get to the Q&A, that would be fantastic. And then I'll remind you to turn those back on. Now, again, uh, as we've been doing the last few months, um, when I do roll call after the presentation, we will take attendance. So we'd like to know... How many are in attendance at each site? Okay, so uh, let's get on to the program. So without further ado, I, I'm really pleased to announce uh, our special program today. Uh, Bill, I'm going to try this, Bill. Deluhosh, right? All right, Bill Deluhosh. Yes. Uh, he's a music therapist, and uh, he's with Tri-City Music Therapy Services. Uh, he does individual and group sessions, uh, and... Bill is uh, joining us, and he's going to talk to us today about music therapy for Parkinson's patients, Parkinson's and the brain. Uh, he's from the beautiful Tri-Cities, and so we'd like to give a warm welcome to Bill Deluhosh. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, okay, the voices. I'm going to get used to get this echo. So yeah, my name is Bill Deluhosh, and I'm a music therapist. Um, based in the uh, Richland Tri-Cities area. Um, I do contract work through Cadillac Regional Medical Center with their outpatient and inpatient services. And I've established my own business just because music therapy is so new. I'm the first one down in that particular area. So what I'm going to do is give you a brief background on music therapy and what it is and where it came from and how it's developed as a discipline and then focus into a lot of the work that I do at the hospital, as well as specifically Parkinson's and some ideas that are being used with Parkinson's. So the idea of music and healing actually goes back thousands of years. The ancient Chinese symbol for medicine actually had the symbol for music within it. Ancient um, Aristotle and Plato and ancient Greece talked a lot about music and healing. There's actually a passage in the Bible, Samuel 16, 23, which talks about David being summoned to King Saul. And when he would play the music, the evils would leave him and his house would leave him. So um, it's not really a new concept. And music's been a part of every culture and every society in the history of the world. So there must be something along that has been with us for so long. More recently, in World War II, the, when soldiers were coming back from the war, they brought in musicians to play for those soldiers. And the doctors and nurses staff started seeing a lot more or a lot differences in their patients, um, particularly with um, what they called at the time shell shock, but we now refer to as post-traumatic stress disorder. And through that, the music therapy discipline itself, there we go, um, came up. And the first music therapy degree program was at the University of Michigan in the late 1940s. There are now over 70 programs in the United States 
alone that offer these degree programs. My bachelor's is from Merrill Hurst University, which is in Southeast Oregon, which has been there for somewhere around 15 years. And it actually came from Willamette before that. Um, Seattle Pacific University is in the their end of their third year of developing their music therapy program. Um, music therapy is also worldwide. Asia, Africa, Europe, Canada, Mexico. Um, so it's not a new concept. It's not a local concept. Um, our international conference, our semi-annual international conference, was held actually in South Korea last summer. Uh, two years ago, it was in Argentina. So this is nothing new. We're just, people are now starting to hear about us and see the benefits of music. The degree program itself of the training that music therapists go through is almost two degrees in one. We go through the same music classes that music majors go through. We go through music theory, history of music, conducting, performance. We have to be proficient in guitar, piano, and voice. Um, in addition to that, then we take various psychology and counseling classes, understanding how the mind works, how the brain works in response to different therapies. We also have physiology and biology classes that we have to take. How does the body work? How does the body respond? And then tying that together, we go through music therapy with children, music therapy and mental health, music therapy in medical setting, um, music therapy um, with elders with dementia and Alzheimer's, and looking at the research. And that's the key to all this. Music, there, music is enjoyable. We like music. We enjoy music. But music therapy is based in research and the numbers. And that's why now, after these number of years, the research and the numbers are showing these benefits. Music therapy is also one of those disciplines you can't learn out of a book. You have to interact with people. So right from the beginning, we're working with patients. Throughout my time at Merrill Hurst, I worked with both children and adults with special needs, autism, Down syndrome. I worked with infants and toddlers. I worked with preschoolers. I worked with elders in an independent living situation, as well as elders in a, a memory care unit with Alzheimer's and dementia. I spent two years or two quarters at Willamette Valley Hospice in Salem, Oregon. And I spent two quarters at um, Providence Hospital in the inpatient oncology unit. So as you can see, there's a wide population of where music is being used. After all the classwork, before we actually get our degree, we have to complete basically a six-month internship at a particular site. My internship site was um, on Whidbey Island at Whidbey Island General Hospital, based in their home health and hospice area. Um, and yeah, that was that. Um, and then after that, then we get our national, we get our degree. Um, we have a national board certification exam that we take, continuing ed credits. Again, the key to this one is the body of research that's being done, and I'm going to go through some of that as we're talking. Um, if you take anything away from this today, it's basically when you hear about occupational, physical, and speech therapists, as I'm sure on one time or another you've all dealt with, that music therapy is working along those same lines. So that's what we're moving into. As I tell people, we're, we're just the new kids on the block. So that's the history of music therapy in a quick little nutshell. So how many actually here in this room have actually heard of music therapy? I like that. The more presentations I do, the more hands keep going up, which is great. And that's why I love doing these presentations, is, is being able to talk to people more and more about music therapy. So music therapy is basically using music to achieve non-musical goals. We don't teach people how to play the guitar or the piano. We use music and the instruments as a tool to work on these other goals. Um, and as you can see, physical, behavioral, social, communication, cognitive, emotional, there's a wide variety of things that music can work with. And that's why 
with all of the populations that I mentioned and how useful it is. So I'm going to spend the rest of the time here talking a little bit about these um, and then focus again specifically on issues with Parkinson's. Um, the physical aspect of motor control. One of the reasons that music works so well um, with us is there's no music center of the brain. So if one part of the brain happens to be damaged or impaired, music still can reach those other areas of the brain. And that's what makes it that useful tool and makes it such a versatile and unique tool for that. So with physical, fine motor skills, holding on to the simple act of holding on to a mallet, Phys or fine motor skills, range of motion, playing instruments. Um, my apple for the teacher, you know, shakers, shaking, motor movement. Hope that's not too overwhelming on that. Um, we're musicians, we tend to be loud sometimes. Um, so that's with the fine motor skills and gross motor skills. We also do a lot with um, working with gait, balance, length of stride, and I'm going to talk specifically about that in a little bit. Um, pain management. Um, music has been shown and research has found that people who actually listen to music in the hospitals who are taking pain medication actually use less pain medication. Music tends to be a very great distractor. It can help focus your attention. The example I give is if your hand hurts, and you have this pain in your hand, but someone comes up and stomps on your foot, your attention goes right to your foot. <laughs> music and that songs that you love or the music you enjoy, you can use that to help dra distract your attention away from that pain. So we work with um, people in chronic pain. Um, that was a lot of the work that I did when, when I worked with patients on oncology and going through um, chemo treatments. Um, behavioral. Whenever you do something that is more fun, you're more apt to do it. Um, the one key area that this works well with is children, especially children with autism. The longer you can, we can keep their attention, the longer we can keep your motivation, the more we get to work on those non-musical goals. How many have stared at that counter on the bike or on the treadmill watching it just click five, six, seven, eight? You put on a song and you sing to that song. If you've ever been driving in your car and a song comes on the radio that you haven't heard for a while, it's like, I love that song. And all, you're not thinking now about what's going on. You're listening to that song. That's that beautiful aspect of music for getting their attention. Um, social skills, um, again, primarily with autism. Some um, people with autism have social issues and eye contact and engaging is very tough for them. But music itself, playing music together, them playing the drums, them playing a shaker, me playing my guitar, that's a social thing. We're, we're, they're watching me. Are we repeating patterns? Strum, strum, strum. Strum, strum, strum. Making a game out of it. Again, music is the tool that we're using. And through these, we're teaching social skills, turn things. Um, communication and articulation um, and cognitive and memory. And all. Um, some of you may have heard about it being the one-year anniversary of Congresswoman Giffords. And music therapy was part of her rehabilitation and is still continuing to be part of her rehabilitation. Hello, excuse me. This is Seattle. The um, sound has changed quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, we can't hear Did you. the mic drop? Yeah, there you go. Is that working? <laughs> We're not hearing the lavalier at the moment. There we go. You hearing that? There we go. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We get the microphones. <laughs> that's, a, no, that's not going off. Low battery. Yeah, I think we need to uh, switch you over to this for a moment. And I'll new batteries. There you go. It's not user error. Imagine that. <laughs> um, so 
communication, um, Congresswoman Giffords. As I mentioned before, there's no music center of the brain. Some people who've suffered strokes or traumatic brain injury who can no longer speak can still sing because singing is processed differently. So they may be limited to yes, no, that, that, but they can still sing all of Home on the Range. They can still sing all of Christmas carols, as we've just probably sang a lot. Um, so that capacity to make full sentences, to remember, oh, give me a home where the buffaloes roam. They remember the lyrics. They remember those, um, the cadences and how the words work. So when I work with with um, patients with recovering from stroke with this, those are the goals that we're working with. And since that capacity is still there, the music just helps to retrain and rewire the brain, which is what we found, is the plasticity of that. Thank you very much. Okay. There. Is that working? Got to keep my hands free. I'm, I'm a guitar player, not a singer, so I'm not used to that. Um, so when we're looking with articulation, the more we sing, singing is working with breath control. You know, if we're doing breathing exercises, singing takes breath control, um, as well as going with memory. I mentioned that I'd work with patients with Alzheimer's and dementia. Um, when I work um, in the inpatient rehab at Cadillac and people have dementia or um, Alzheimer's and sort of beginning and their focus drifts, the music can sometimes focus that attention so we can work on what they need to, to, be, to be discharged. Um, some people with Alzheimer's may not remember what they had for breakfast, but they'll remember these songs that they sang as children. They'll remember these songs that we sang as kids. It tends to be our music of our teens and our 20s that really connect your attention. So whatever you listen to in your teens and your 20s, that's probably the music that you're still enjoying. You may have widened, widened your perspective or your appreciation, but that's home to you. Um, emotional, anxiety, and relaxation. Now I'm all paranoid about this thing. <laughs> um, just along with, with um, pain management, working with getting your attention and using music to sort of soothe and focus <sighs> deep breaths when you're listening to quiet music. Again, the other bonus about music is it's very person-centered, and you may have heard that term. It's being used a lot lately. Um, we use it at Cadillac primarily to say, you know, you're not a disease, you're not a diagnosis, you're not a procedure or a number, you're a person, and you, each individual has different needs. Music's great for that. What one person finds enjoyable is nails on a chalkboard for somebody else. What someone finds relaxing may not be relaxing for somebody else. So we can work with that of you, you taking control of, this is the music that I like. When I'm in the hospital, um, and this has happened more than once, and one of the first questions I ask is, what kind of music do you like or not like? And I get country music. And it's like, okay, there's traditional country western, there's the Johnny Cash, Willie Nelson singer-songwriter, and then there's the new Lady Antebellum, Kenny Chesney. And every once in a while I get that country music, the real stuff, not that new pop stuff. <laughs> so um, when you're working with anxiety and relaxation, Focusing that, and that goes with support too when I work with patients in hospice and end of care. Providing that support, and a lot of spiritual, whether it's traditional hymns or new worship music. Music, I call it warm, the warm blanket syndrome. It helps us get through those days. We probably all have those songs. I call them the breakup songs. Songs you listen to when you broke up and you listen to it for two or three weeks and you never want to hear it again. They, the, the songs that got you through a funeral. There's also songs that get you through weddings and parties. And when you hear that, you are right back into that place. And I heard once, music is second only to smell in sparking memories. Grandma's cookies will take you right back to grandma's house. That song will take you, that's the song that Uncle Bob used to play in his banjo every week. 
or at, at every every picnic. So that's a lot of what, again, basics of music therapy holes. And now, excuse me. So primarily with neurological function, there's a specific area of music therapy called neurological music therapy. And neurologists and physicians and music therapists are all working together developing this program. Colorado State University, the um, Bi Center for Biomedical Research in Music at Colorado State, is doing a lot of research with this. Um, and it's using music to work on gait, as I talked about with those physical goals, gait and range of motion. Um, rhythmic auditory stimulation. Now we'll really see if the microphone works. When we're working with gait people, and I co-treat on the outpatient side with physical therapists in a variety of patients, but when I'm working with Parkinson's or working with gait, what this research has found is that when you put a beat and a steady beat to it, that we as people, we want to connect with what's going on outside. If you've ever been walking with someone and you're sort of walking at a different pace and you change up your step to sort of match what they're doing, that's what we want. So when we put a steady beat to sort of give a little bit of cueing, a little bit of anticipation, this is when I'm supposed to stop. I'm stepping left, right. Anyone in the military, military cadences, Army, Navy, you know, that's we walk and we give that little bit of support. And what the research has found, and I was seeing, when that little bit of beat walking, they start walking along with that. What's great about live music and why music therapists are where we're specifically working is I can change my, how I'm playing or what I'm playing to accommodate the person at that time. Sometimes they have a little more energy than they did the week before. I've had some times where I'm playing nice and slow, and that's how we start out. Throughout the session, they'll pick up. I've had some where they started going, and I, and I got to strum along because they got so much energy, and I can match that. And through that, they're walking farther. The um, episodes of freezing, or, um, going around corners, going through doorways, diminishes and significantly decreases. Um, when you're some of the research that's being done um, with recorded music is when people use music they like they get there and they put on iPods and iPhones when they listen to that and they go out and walk again significantly decreases this freezing because your brain goes oh I can't stop now the music's still going and the music gives you that little bit of encouragement to move, that little bit of support to get around those corners. Um, and that's where you get to choose the music you like. And that's the bonus of modern technology. You know, I grew up in the age where we had those big black CDs, as the kids in pediatric called them, where if you wanted to listen to music, you had to go home, get an album, put a needle on it. Maybe you had to get the penny out to put the penny on the needle to keep it from scratching. Everyone under 40 is like, what are you talking about? <laughs> um, but modern technology with iPods and iPhones. Are you on? There you go. Um, we can take that music with us. We can use those headphones. Um, the other thing that happens with music along with this is motivation. And I mentioned this. Uh, there's research that shows that people who exercise with music tend to exercise longer. So we'll see if this works. Hopefully this will work for the people out on the um, fringes, so to speak. So tell me if this sounds familiar. You all have an image in your head, right? What can you see with this? Hands up in the air, running up and down the stairs. Again, anyone under 40 is like, I don't get it. Um, 
I used I used the Rocky theme. We're working with a patient with Parkinson's. Just because I don't know what's going on with the other things. And we were sitting there, and we were working with, and we walked and we were resting. They were sitting there, and we were trying to do some stretches. And they had to stretch out and reach out. Well, I didn't have my drums, and a lot of the times I will have my drums, and I will hold the drum out, and they're playing the drums. And we're, you know, we'll sing a song. On the road again. Just can't wait to get on the road again. Again, using that cueing. But I didn't have these this time. So they was like this, and she goes, stretch your arms. So I went, oh, cool. So I pulled out my iPod really quick and hit the Rocky theme, and I put my hands out. And as soon as I did that, he got this big smile on his face. He put his hands in a fist, and he started punching. Everyone in the gym went, we know that. And the whole mood changed with that introduction of music. This is stuff you can use at home, um, the Clean the House CDs. Put on that music you can't sit still to. Here's the other one that I use in Impatient a lot. Because there's music you can't sit still to. Big band music, big band jazz, dance music. You can't, you know, pretty soon the foot's going to start tapping along with this. I was in the hospital um, um, seeing a patient in our clinical decision unit, and I just finished, and I was at the nurse's station. And I looked across the way, and in a room across the way was a woman through the glass door, and I saw her point at me. And from around the corner, one of the physical therapists said, oh, that's Bill. He's the music therapist. And when I'm in the hospital, this is technically how I look. This, I don't have a stethoscope. I have the guitar. So, of course, not wanting to be rude, I went over and I introduced myself. And I said, so how's it going? How are you doing? Um, what's going on? What are you working with? And he's like, well, we're trying to get her out of bed, you know. And she was 100 years old, 94 and a half pounds from France. And, and but she goes, oh, I'm too tired. I can't sit up. And I go, oh, I go, do you ever dance when you were growing up? She goes, yeah, I used to dance. Five foot two, eyes of blue. Oh, what those five foot could do. Has anybody seen my gal? See, I saw you sing. <laughs> I get that a lot. You start singing it. Maybe some of the feet started tomming with this. So I just started circling through that. And I sang and I'd play and I sing and I'd play. And after a few minutes, she goes, do you think you have the energy to sit up? She goes, yeah, I think I can sit up. So they got her to sit up. And I just kept circling. And if I could do it and speak at the same time, I would. Um, and... It's like, maybe you can sit on the edge of the bed. And the physical therapist brought on the edge of the bed. And she's tapping her foot. She's got this smile. She hums along with me. Do you think you can stand up? She goes, yeah. So she stood up. She goes, oh, good. It's like, just check out. Check in the view because you'll see why. Um, she goes, do you think you can maybe walk a little bit? She goes, sure, OK. So I'm singing five foot two, eyes of blue. She took about three steps. And she shook her foot <laughs> there and this. We lost it. We were cracking up. She had this big smile on her face, but she ended up walking all the way around the bed and walked all the way back around. And that whole instance took place in about seven minutes. From I don't have the energy to even sit up. To get up, shake that, but crack. Those are the stories I tell. Um, so that's that motivation factor that our brains and our body connect into. Um, the other terms, pattern sensory enhancement, again, working a lot with motor control. The last one, instrument playing. Um, playing music, singing, making music actually helps spark the production of serotonin and dopamine in the brain, which decreases with Parkinson's. So by playing music, that can also, again, connects into it. Um, I have a weekly drum group that I've been going for about 18 months now. Um, we have anywhere from 5 to 15 people, depending. It's an open community group that Cadillac supports um, that we do through our outpatient. And as you can see, we sit around with these big old drums. We play instruments. Percussion instruments we use a lot in music therapy because you don't need to study for years to play percussion instruments. The other good thing about percussion instruments 
There's no wrong notes. If you're on beat, it's traditional. If you're off beat, it's jazz. <laughs> it all sounds, it all fits into the individual. And we have some where we're sort of a little slower, some we're faster. We sing while we're playing drums, and songs will come out of people, and someone will start singing, and it's like, we've never heard that song before, but they'll sing it on their own. Playing music, it's fun, it's enjoyable. Movement, helping with that movement. Uh, we were there f about three months into it, and one of the women that had been there the whole time, she, got, she comes in with her walker every day, and she, this, and she got off from the session, pretty good fun session, and she just started heading straight for the door. It's like, I'm out of here. It's like, excuse me, I, you need your walker. She had just had all this energy to move, playing movement. We, we, the group goes for about 45 minutes, and it's amazing how that sort of wakes you up. Um, that, the other picture is from the Tremble Clefs group down in Portland, and I know you have a Tremble Clefs, Tremble Clefs group here in Spokane, and from what I hear, you have two Maybe. So I know there's, for those people here in this room, that information. Singing goes back to that articulation that I talked about working with, with singing can help motivate that um, and work on those speech skills that you're working with. Um, as I said, research, music therapy is research-based. There are numbers that go along with this. Um, I picked this particular one just because it, it showed a lot of different success with music. There's uh, 32 people that were involved in this group. Um, 16 only had physical therapy, and another 16 had music therapy with their regular PT. And as you can see, better improved in movement, um, both fine and gross motor skills, improved quality of light and happiness and motivation. And then, of course, the reduction in freezing that goes along with that. Music, again, is this wonderful, wonderful tool that you can use on your own at home. Um, music therapy is starting to be included in more and more rehabilitation programs. Uh, music therapy is listed as a related service with the Older Americans Act, the Individuals with Dis Disabilities Education Act, um, it has been reimbursed through some insurance companies. Um, Medicare and Medicaid have music therapy listed. We're still the new kids on the block. I am paid through the hospital as part of the hospital services, so they're not billing individually for music therapy services yet. Working on it. Um, when I work outside um, with patients and groups, they're paying me out of pocket currently. But our representatives, we've talked with our representatives in our state about helping to get our state recognition. Um, some states throughout the country have worked on getting licensure. New York, Nevada just got a huge support and recognition with their legislator. North Dakota. So again, we're that new kids on the block. But occupational physical therapy, speech therapy, music therapy. So to leave you with this at home or what you can do again go home and remember the music find the music maybe go buy the cds that album you had in school what's your music that gets you going there's no right music there's no wrong music sometimes music's just mood oriented you like the quiet fireplace music you know you like the rocking down the highway music to get you moving you can use that yourself so with that, we're shooting right at time and say thank you. And I'm welcome to all sorts of questions, anything right. music related. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, outstanding. And I love music mm. just like everybody, so I can see how <laughs> it always makes us feel better. So I can see how that would help and in that's many, the, many ways. That's so. that X factor that yeah. music has. Thank you, Tim. Well, um, we'll move on to the Q&A session at this point in time. And, and uh, remote sites, if you would please turn on your microphones so we can hear you, that would be terrific. So as always, uh, when I call on you, if you would please tell me how many people are present uh, in your location, uh, we would appreciate that. So let's start uh, with the W's in Walla Walla, uh, Providence St. Mary's. Uh, welcome. And do you have any questions? No questions. There are four of us. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Anchorage, Alaska. 
There are five of us. We have a question. Um, I was wondering, is Alaska, I'm sure, doesn't have a musical therapist yet, but is there, can we kind of get, is there some kind of information we can find to get somebody licensed up here? Or do we have to import somebody? Um, hopefully you can import somebody. Um, Hawaii just um, two years ago um, finally got a music therapist to go to Hawaii, which amazes me. Who wouldn't want to go to Hawaii for a, a while? Um, there is places you can get information. I guess I'm looking at this. It's, um, if you go to musictherapy.org, which is our um, site, our um, national association site, um, they'll have information on music therapy in general. Anywhere on the internet, if you type in music therapy and Parkinson's, you're going to get a lot of information. Um, I believe my handout was sent out to your groups. You are free to email me with any specific questions, and I'll see what I can do for you up in Alaska. Sort of a long road trip, but I'd be willing to make it at least once. Um, Spring to summer, right? Exactly. <laughs> um, I don't know. It looks pretty. So that's the cruise I want to take is up towards Alaska and the glaciers. So um, the information is out there on the internet. So for you right now, you know that's your best bet. See, there's videos on YouTube and around that sh actually you can see some of this going on. So that's a place where you can start. Thank you. Thank you for your question. And uh, they have that, you know, full-on light therapy going in uh, in Alaska, <laughs> and they've got that those long. Long days, days. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's yeah, pretty yeah. cool. Anyway, thank you so much. Uh, let's move on to uh, Tanaska at North Valley Hospital. There are six of us present, no questions. All right, thank you for joining us. Uh, Billings, Montana. There's 13 and we have a comment. I'm a harpist for hospice, oh. and I uh, am hitting... Oh, there, there he is. Um, that the uh, missing your point should have been made that it also lowers blood pressure and slows the heart, calms anxiety. Um, but yes, I'm fully interested in getting more information for Parkinson's too. And as a harpist, are you actually a pharmacologist or just working with heart music? Did you understand? I didn't understand um, what you said. A, there's a, a discipline using music called music thanatology, T-H-A-N-A. -A, oh, okay. And that works specifically with harp and hospice and end-of-life care. So that's why I was wondering. You didn't mention that specifically. But yes, music therapy, again, that research lowers blood pressure, um, helps increase breathing, um, actually showing an increase in oxygen saturation. That's where a lot of the research is going with um, NICU babies is. Re um, NICU babies who are using music tend to get weight, gain weight faster, tend to have earlier discharge. That's what some uh, Florida State University is doing a lot of that. So thank you for that blood pressure. I missed that. Okay, our friends uh, from Lipsville. Any questions? I don't think we have any questions. Do you hear me? Yes, I can. And yep, there's two of you there. There's two of us. Um, we didn't get the handout. Okay. I'll, we'll take a note of that and make sure you get it okay. Okay. I might ask a question, too, about mine. Uh, I played a, a uh, guitar before I got this, and now I'm, I'm so shaky, I can't play it. I hit an electric uh, dialing a telephone. I have a terrible time dialing. When I go to dial, I'll probably call that number four times before I get it because I'll hit one number twice every time. Right. Somewhere down the line. Now, how do I get over that or what do I do? Uh, well, something you can think about for the guitar, I don't know if you've ever explored open tunings or slide guitar, and, you know, you can use one finger. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Just to sort of keep, get that music going. Um, music and actually instrument playing. I use people who've played piano before in inpatient rehab, I'll bring up the piano and use that to sort of work with that. So if it's still enjoyable, I'd say still give it a shot. That's for the phone. Well, I, played, I played, played lots of uh, Western music, 
and got called up. The voice has changed. It doesn't have near the... I used to sing for weddings and, uh, and for uh, funerals and everything, and I can't do it anymore. And that, that's why I use my good friend the capo to have to change keys every once in a while to lower it. In the morning, I do a great Johnny Cash in the morning, but, you know, as the day goes on, I get that up. So thank you very much. <laughs> All right, thank I'll you for joining play, us. I also play, play a saxophone, and I've had trouble with that. I, I can't get that going again. Played it two years in a band, jazz band. Played for senior balls and... and Multi-talent. Uh, Multi-talent, yeah, good musician. So we got to find something for else that you can... So here I'm, drums, start trying the drums and the shakers. There's another good place to start. <laughs> okay, okay. There you go, thank you. Okay, Clarkston, Tri-State Memorial. Hi, we're really enjoying the program today. Uh, we have two questions. Uh, we're, we're in a rural area, so the question is, how available are music therapy services in rural areas? Um, it actually just depends on the state and where they're at. Um, they, the farther east you go in the United States, the more music therapists are known and utilized, um, both in large cities and smaller cities. Um, here in the Northwest, we have um, Seattle and the, the Pacific sort of Puget Sound area, as well as Portland. Um, there are a couple music therapists up here in Spokane. I was actually brought into Cadillac two years ago. They actually went looking for a music therapist. So it comes down to having that interest and someone either from the area. What I've found now that I've been in, in Richland um, is a lot of students from high schools and colleges came and talked to me and didn't realize that there was an actual career in music therapy, which until 10 years ago, I didn't either. And there are now th um, three students from the Tri-Cities area that are going to get degrees in music therapy. And so my guess is they'll end up coming back to the Tri-Cities area. It'll probably be their first chance. So mm -hmm. the other, the instance with you with rural areas, I'd say start with like Alaska. Try to work, do some work on your own um, with research and maybe bring it to the attention of your, of people you're working with, whether it's um, other therapists. Okay, second question. Thank you. Second question, uh, do you have an opinion of uh, the uh, efficacy of line dancing for those who are still able to do that? Any type of movement is great. There's movement therapies coming out with, um, especially with Parkinson's, there's actually a movement group in Kirkland, Washington. Dance therapy, movement therapy, anything you can do to keep moving. Music, again, do that. So I'm a big proponent of all of that. Great, thanks, appreciate it. You're welcome. Now, Bill, is there a... Um a uh, website or a source where someone could go to find out if there's a therapist in their area? Um, on the, our national website, musictherapy.org, there is a find a music therapist. Okay. Um, you can do that. You can contact me. Um, I can certainly do some calls and find people. Um, as I say, I'm open to anything in the Northwest. And I know there's other people, other music therapists in the Northwest who can come and do talks and do presentations and see what we can do as, as we try to build. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's very helpful, thank you. We have nine people here today. Oh, thank you very much. And we'll make sure, uh, Cindy, that we get that on the, uh, the website, that information, uh, so people can access that. Thank you for the questions. Uh, let's move on to uh, Pullman uh, Regional Hospital. Uh, you have to hold it down. I'm sorry? Heard you for a second. Pullman, uh, any questions? Okay, we can come we back to you if you're oh, talking. There you go. Whoop. You're there for a second. Uh, yeah, we have no questions. Enjoy okay, it looks like there's four of you. Five. And there are five, five of us. Okay, well, thank five. you for joining us. Okay. Okay, Colville, uh, Providence, Mar Mount Carmel. How is that problem with that one? <laughs> Hi, we're from Colville. There's five of us present. And I'm the activity director in a skilled nursing facility, and I'm very inspired by doing this, but I'm a total novice when it comes to music. And I, I would like to integrate it maybe in an exercise program or maybe use it for just a music and movement. And I, I don't even know where to start. 
Um, great. Activity directors, I talk with a lot of activity directors. Um, recorded music is, your, is a great place that you can start. CDN, push play. The tough part, as I said with my job, is finding out what music do they like, what will they respond to with any sort of music group. Um, specifically, what I would say is um, if you have my email address, email me specifically, and I'd be happy to work with you on trying to work something out. Okay, my other question would be my exercise group. I actually discontinued using music in it because I had trouble finding a low enough beat per minute that my residents looked like they were flailing because it was so fast and furious and they uh -huh. really aren't able to work at the pace of the music. So maybe even some recommendations for uh, lower beat per minute music that's consistent. You know, a lot of it kind of goes back and forth and the vacillating is also hard to plan your exercise program to. Right, and that's where your DJ skills come in and programming, you know, what music are we going to use. Um, there are programs out there on the internet that actually will analyze it for you, but I go through the same thing going, that's too fast. Um, again, that's the bonus, bonus of using live music because we can switch it on the spot. Um, but I'd be happy again to work with you and finding, give you specific ideas on where to start with. Would you please post your email address again? It was so quick, I didn't get it written down. Yes. If it's not, there is one on the handout. Um, we will make sure that's on the website too. If that okay, would, you got I'm, it. I'm I'll okay make sure we get that. All right, All right thank, thank you. you. And I believe I told you there were five of us. Is that correct? Yes, you did. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Enjoyed this. Excellent. Uh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, Kootenai Medical Center. Hello. We're here. Good program. Really enjoyed it. There are 10 of us. And thank we you. have a question. We have okay. a question. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, it's my understanding with Parkinson's, as the disease progresses, that uh, one of the common problems relates to the throat and uh, eventually to aspirational pneumonia. And is there any research done that shows that singing relates to strengthening the throat muscles or the epiglottis or in that area? <laughs> yes. Um. Yeah, the tremble clefts, which is the, the singing groups that are around, actually around the world, um, that shows the benefit of singing with throat muscles and, again, with breathing. Um, I can't address it off the top of my head, um, um, but, yes, there is research that is supporting the use of music with any types of vocal production. Thank you. I, I'd just like to add an observation. I haven't heard it mentioned, but... Two years ago, my wife got me a karaoke singing machine. And I'll tell you, I can go down in the pool room and sing for three hours. There when you I go. finish there that go. session, That's I feel go. good. And That's so I'm suggesting idea. that people get involved in karaoke, even if it's alone in your own pool room. That's right. Now, you know, singing in the car, singing in the shower, singing in the pool room. You know, it's all good. And believe me, some of my friends have terrible <laughs> voices, yet no they thing. insist on singing all the time. No such thing. No such thing. <laughs> Where it's not about American Idol. It's about how you That's, the, you know, get the American Idol thing out of your head. I thought you were going to be mad because you didn't mention Elvis. Or something <laughs> like that. Okay. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Any more questions there? Hello. No. No more questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Pendleton, Oregon. Hi, we have eight people and a dog again. And thank you so much for the great uh, program. Oh, just a second. I love the dog. We have pet therapy that. at the hospital. Is there a question? Yeah. Oh, okay. Now? She was asking okay. the dog. Hi. I'm this. <laughs> I'm the speech therapist, and I try to come. There's my puppy. I try to come every month and uh, listen and learn and, and then answer some questions if I can. And I do use some uh, music therapy, music with my therapy, I should say it that way. I've used it with a particular Parkinson's patient, and we use karaoke. Um, he also he had some problems with cluttering the fast speech. I encouraged him to, um, you can go online and get um, metronome.com and uh, can slow yourself down with that. Now I have a question 
Aren't there some of the machines, like for exercising, that have a speed control where you can slow down the music or speed it up, like your Zumba, Zumba classes and things like that? Do you know? Um, are you talking about like slowing down the recorded music on the CD? Yeah. Um, yeah. There are. Um, <laughs> I know the ones that I know tend to be what musicians use when they're trying to learn a piece of music. So you can find them through um, music store websites. Okay. Um, that's the extent that I know of that. Okay. But there, yeah, modern technology has done wonders for that. Yeah. I have, th I have a uh, stroke patient who's three years post-stroke, and I just got her. And we did some Christmas carols at my rate, and then her graduation was being able to do the, she's nonverbal, and doing it, doing the parumpa pum pums and the la 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 la's with the yeah. right cadence. So, well, thank you. We enjoyed it very much. Oh, and, just oh, and we didn't get a print. We didn't get a print out either. Okay. And okay. okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Thank you. Do you know if your your karaoke machine has a speed control on them? I've never actually looked at one. I have one that mine doesn't, but are they okay? So that might be something to look at your karaoke machine and see if it's actually possible. Thank you, Don. And for those of you that are still playing records, you can turn it down to 33 and a third. Go down to se yeah. Go down to <laughs> 78. <laughs> no. So you can try that too, you know. I mean, who says technology is that great? Anyway? I still have albums, you know. Yeah, it's I do like too. This. So, um, okay. okay, let's move on to Dayton, please. <laughs> Dayton General Hospital. Maybe Dan. Anybody else? Yes. Yeah. No questions, Doug. Okay, and how many are present? How many people are in Dayton, please? Probably just Doug. <laughs> Just us. <laughs> it's like there. Four? Four? Is that what you said? Four. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, Kirkland, Evergreen Healthcare. Yes. Hello. There are two of us, and thanks for the wonderful program. And I have a question. You touched on neuroplasticity. Can you speak a little bit more about how the neuroplasticity is measured? Is it imaged or is it self report? Neuroplasticity is what's come up with that neurological music therapy. And that's where that um, research has come in. They are scanning through um, MRIs. So there are brain scans being along with that. With that um, uh, I lost the track of what I was saying. Um, MRI. MRIs and neuroplasticity. Some is self-report self with observation of research. But yes, with modern technology and being able to scan it, they are seeing that's because it's music will light up all sorts of parts of the brain. Do you know that answer that question? I can. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's move to Grangeville, Idaho. Syringa General. Grangeville. Okay. Uh, now, there may have been a, a remote site or two that came on after we started. Did I miss anybody? Moses Lake. Okay, oh. Moses Lake. Thank you. Sorry we missed you. Uh, any questions? There's five, there's five of us, and uh, I didn't realize that there were handouts. We've never had any handouts since we've been attending, and we didn't have any today. Okay. Yeah, I just uh, enjoyed I, the program very much. Thank you. Yeah, I tried because I, I have handouts here, and I thought of it with all the remotes. I tried to get them to actually make it possible. But if they'll just put all the information up on the website, you should be able to get that there. Right. Access it through the web. Uh, but I, I did take Thank notes. Uh, Ritzville, Pendleton, and Moses Lake would like handouts. OK. Uh, anybody else in remote sites before we move to Spokane? Hello. I'm in Pullman. I have a comment. Can you okay. hear me? Yes. yes. Uh, I have danced for many years before I got Parkinson's. The dances of the Balkan area, uh, in particular Bulgaria, are very good for people who must go more slowly. The lady asked about this. They actually have what are called granny dances, for those of us who are not too spry. Gotta love that folk music. Most, most 
folk dance groups have variable speed players and you can if you can find a group that practices traditional folk dances they should be able to help you find a way to find a player suitable for what the lady was asking about that's good yeah that's very good so thank you so the actual players themselves is what you're saying is have that I use a lot of slow waltzes you know Tennessee waltz you know you get that slow dancing okay well thank you let's well let's move to our Spokane audience folks here in Spokane any questions this is Walla Walla we did not get handouts either okay thank you Jayden has a comment to make did someone have a comment yes I'm from Dayton and I recently had an experience with singing in the church choir I for the last three months and I've seen a big difference in myself awesome great that's it it really helps I would recommend it for anyone and, and if you, you realize, up until, you know, the 1950s, which is only 60 years ago, we, if you wanted to make music, you had to sing it yourself. You had to play it yourself. So it's, again, part of that, as I said, thousand years of singing and making music that we've lost. So any opportunity to do that, whether it's a community choir, a church choir, I say go. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Thank so, you. Okay. Um, you mentioned that music therapy helps with freezing. Yes. And I wondered how long these benefits are seen and how often somebody should see a music therapist. Um, some of the studies that are showing that the freezing will last four hours after that. Some of the more longer term studies where they've had six weeks of music therapy involved in their therapy that they and then stop. They've seen differences lasting up to three and four months. Yeah, after that. So, so how often but, should somebody? Um, weekly is great. Monthly is good. The, the more you can do it, the better. But if it's anything else, this is all about ma maintaining maintenance. And it's, every, and it's as like just with exercise. You know, if you do it once a month, you're still at the same weight. So, but with freezing and using music, and that's the thing about freezing, it's just a matter of turning the, the player on. Uh, one one second. Um, uh, remote sites, could I have you guys mute your microphones, please, uh, until you have a question? Thank you. And then I had one more question. I was wondering how much it costs to see a music therapist if you're paying out of your own pocket. Um, it varies through states. I charge, depending on what I'm doing with the patient, um, anywhere from 60 to $80 for an hour. When I do groups, it depends on the size of the group. So, and some of those are bro broken down into 30-minute sessions or 45-minute sessions as well. All right. Any more questions? Here comes Walt with the mic. <laughs> we'll work our way over. Uh, you mentioned a couple times this. I'm, it sounds like Tremble Clefs to me. Is How do you spell that? Just like it's that T-R-E-M-B-L-E and Clefs. C-L-E-F-S. I was going to say, I had the handout somewhere, but. Um, also, uh, there are like physical therapy DVDs that we purchase to help uh, do that physically ourselves. Is there that option that you're aware of through? A this thing did not. Not specifically with music therapy DVDs. Well, or in, I mean, it could be any medium, but that hits. So that you can do it in your house. You have that as a source. You, in this case, like the one we have, a, a therapist who's worked with folks before and so has developed a program. It's on the DVD. I see. Yeah, I saying. So you've done it with your therapy, and then you can take it home, and it's sort of that guide that you can use at home, is what you're saying. Right. Um, not specifically, but when I work with patients, basically I take the music that you like, because that's the thing is we could do it for you know, one type of music, but not everyone will like that. So what I would think is maybe pick out a couple of those songs, a music that you like, 
and work with your physical therapist of saying, what movements, here's the music, well, can I do this movement, as I did with the Rocky thing, can, with those music, and maybe they can sort of choreograph something that. Um, that's actually a really good idea for music therapy. Yeah. Somebody should do it. I was, was going to say, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> so, anyways. I have a comment about my my dad. He's in the late stages of PD with dementia, mm -hmm. and I'm in the beginning stages. But anyways, we've been going to Tremble Clefts for a long time, and when I get my dad into the car and drive him, he's he's sound asleep. Mm -hmm. I push him in the wheelchair to the to the, you know to the little to the arrow we sing. He's still sound asleep. As soon as he hears that music, he's up and singing. Mm -hmm. And he even has his eyes closed, and he's still singing. Yeah, that's and awesome. And when we go back in the car, he's asleep again. Yeah. But for that one hour, he's up and asleep. But unfortunately, he's getting too bad where we can't take him anymore. But I'm going to continue. And, well, and I would say, when you're at home, start singing. Yeah. Home on the Range, you know, sing those and bring those, or put on some music and sing along to this, and he, and he sings there too. Yeah, and that's, I, there was a gentleman who, his wife would bring him to our group and he'd be very there, but you put that drum and he would start drumming. So, again, that, you know, music. Thank you for your patience. I'd like to make a statement okay. as well as, uh, anyway, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's in 94, 18 years ago. And during that 18 years, I've been active in a church choir and I play in the Shrine Band, the Euphonium, <laughs> actively right now. Yeah. So if anybody wants to play a horn anywhere, I can get you there in the Shrine Band or the Eagles Band. If anybody wants to sing in a church choir, Emmanuel Presbyterian is waiting for you. <laughs> we think that we have a good group. And uh, as I say, I had, don't think I've progressed so badly in Parkinson's other than I've aged. Sure. I was walking better in 94 than I am now I used to walk. I'm also 82 years old. <laughs> so yeah. let's stick with the music. I love it. Thank you. Awesome. Um, awesome. Yeah, and there's it's never too late to learn a musical instrument. My mom taught piano out of the house for 60 years, and the patients that were the best were actually the ones that were 50 and older because they wanted to. Um, one quick thing, if, if I can. Um, I'm starting to use... <laughs> Um, there's a lot of research with the harmonica because the harmonica is one instrument that makes music when you breathe out and when you breathe in. So we're creating a music group for people with COPD and breathing. Nice. It's a great little instrument, fits in your pocket that, you know, with breathing and stuff. But learning a musical instrument, again, singing, anything you can do to bring that in and bring yourself some joy. Fantastic. Any other questions? Thank you for that. Yeah, thank no you. Problem. Yeah, I, I might just also mention, Bill, that uh, uh, in the Spokane area and at several locations on the west side of the state, uh, there are Dance for Parkinson's groups. Um, and, and in addition to, you know, the Dance for Parkinson's group here in Spokane, we do have the two Tremblecleft's uh, branches that you mentioned. And uh, our music accompanist, Donna Douglas, is trying to introduce us to getting some movements going in addition to the singing. So just the singing, too. Great. Right. And like a swing choir. Yeah. There you go. A real yeah. swing and, and if any of you uh, are not familiar with the Tremble Cliffs, pr please see me after uh, the session, and I can fill you in on that. And you can also go to the PRC website and get additional information. Thank you. Well, Bill Dalluhush, thank you so much. I probably mispronounced it. You're good. You're close. <laughs> it's one of those names. I'm anyway, okay. uh, let's give him a hand. Uh, outstanding. Thank you. Okay. The uh, the next telehealth is Monday, February 13th. Apologize, I won't be here. I know you're sad, but sorry. Um, the speaker will be Dr. Shaw, who is a neuropsychiatrist, and Dr. Shaw is going to talk about laughter, depression and cognition. So it should be uh, a very informative session as well. Uh, as always, uh, topics today, as well as those in the past, um, you can get the DVD uh, by calling the PRC or going to our website at www.spokaneparkinsons.org. And as we said last month, 
If you have ideas, suggestions for future topics, please keep feeding those into us because that's how we get our ideas as well. So thank you for that, and Happy New Year to everybody, and please drive safely and keep singing.